Hey, this is Jack from Alpha Charts with a stocks to watch video. Today is um, April 24th, 2022. Before we get started, this video is for educational purposes only. Uh, these are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security, and I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned. Know your time frame and risk tolerance. Also, please, if you like these videos, um, like, subscribe. It really does help me out. Also, if you're on Twitter, at AlphaCharts365 is my Twitter handle. Um, I'm going to post this on Twitter. If you can, like it, retweet it, um, get the word out. This one's um, going to be a little bit different because the market sucks right now. And so uh, we're going to talk about um you know just markets in general but i think you're gonna like this one because it's going to talk about really what specifically i'm looking for for a potential bottom um so first off let's talk about the market and this is the s p 500 um spx and it's got this head and shoulders type top right over here and um and so you know you see it interacting with the this is the 200 day and the 50 day by the way longer term charts longer ideas in there um but you know, you see it's it topped, then it one, two, and now we're over here. Um, so I want to bring up from William O'Neill's uh, book. Uh, this is, um, uh, I believe it's uh, uh, Shorts uh, by William O'Neill, um, um, How to Make Money in so uh, Shorting Stocks or, so or something like that. Anyway, um, so it's not mine. But the point being is that if you see, now he's using the 50-day here. I think right now we're seeing this happen with the 200-day. Um, but you're seeing how it tops and then you have like these three bumps, right? And again, we've had two of them and maybe there's a third, maybe there isn't, maybe it doesn't come up quite as much, um, in this ascending type look. And then basically when it cuts back below, that's when the perfect time to short is. So, you know, here we are one, two, maybe we get a rebound early next week. It comes up to the 200 day again. You know, maybe comes up even a little bit higher, comes up into this this potential level right here, and then goes back down. Well, right when it breaks the 200 day, that would be the optimal time to short. Um, it'd be a great spot too because you have overhead supply and and so on. So it's a little bit extended right now, right? If you wanted to try to short this market, but you know, maybe watch for that next one last third spike up. And again, it would really fall right in line with kind of what this um, graphic is kind of showing. Uh, so just be aware of that if you're going to short. Again, this is on um, um, a, um, you know, stock, but I, I think it works just as well on the indexes, okay? So I just wanted to share that with you. If, if you are looking to short, it, it may or may not be the right time to short right now. And there's multiple ways to short this market. Um, inverse ETFs, you can short it just directly, whatever you're into. But let's talk about what I'm seeing um, in the market, okay? So we're going to go through the indexes real quick. Um, and as you can see, SPX, um, you know, this volume is annoying me because it takes up too much space in my charts. So we're going to shut it off. Um, okay, so there's your... COVID-19 low, and there is your VWAP down here, and you have this head and shoulders type pattern right there, right? And again, we're gonna go through these kind of quick. I go more in depth in my um, state of the market, which I put out on this past Saturday and every Saturday. So, um, you know, check that out. As you can see, this is the equal weight SPX. Looks, you know, pretty bad as well. You know, look at the Qs. You know, you see it well below, you know, declining 200 day now moving average. Um, again, it is extended to the downside. I wouldn't be shocked if you see a bat one more bounce up. Again, it does not have to be this high, in my opinion, even though it could be. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it's pretty extended. You know, maybe it continues lower a little bit to the VWAP again from the COVID lows. And then one more big bounce. And then the 200 day is really screaming lower. Um, the equal weight cues, you know, again, had this smaller head and shoulders top, has this bigger head and shoulders top. It already, you know, violated um, the COVID VWAP already uh, multiple times. Um, so it's probably not all that valid at this point. But again, you know, big time pattern potentially developing. All right. Uh, equal weight. Again, I'm going through these quick because I want to get to a lot of things today. And I think that you guys are like this. Um, there is, again, the same type of 
larger pattern look and equal weights are, um, you know, um, you know, really, you know, leaving lower, uh, doing pretty, pretty ugly. That's an equal weight NASDAQ. All right. We can look at the um, mid caps here, MDY. And if you can see the MDY, it's actually holding up better than most, but still under the 200 day. And 200 day is still uh, trying to start to decline. You know, it's flattish to declining. Um, so it'll be better than most. But if this area breaks, especially this down here, I think things could get really dicey really quick. Um, just wondering. Yeah, that, that would get really dicey. Um, IWM, this is small caps, um, has this five um, wave pattern potentially into this area right over here, which was major support. Um, so that is roughly, you know, 12%, 10% lower, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, it doesn't mean it's going to get there in one move, but it could get real ugly. It doesn't even, listen, IWM is not even interacting with the 200 day anymore. <laughs> That's how. That's how nasty it's, it's looking straight down. You know, this 200 day is curving pretty hard to the downside. Um, that tells you everything you need to know right there. Um, and then let's go over IWO. Here's IWO. Um, you know, again, the five wave pattern, maybe a little closer uh, to the support area. And we're going to talk about that later. Okay. So let us go over. I think I'll have enough time to do this. I want to go over each sector in the in the SPX, okay? And what do they look like? So XLE. Here's XLE coming into this area, right? Kind of try to break out, fail on the breakout. Really ugly look, man. Failed breakouts from failed moves come fast moves in the opposite direction. Right now, that's what we're seeing here. Here's the 50 day at 74.60. You know, if it breaks the 50 day. Things get really nasty in energy, so just be real careful. I was piled into a lot of energy names uh, last week. A lot of my stops got hit. Um, lost some money on that, right? That's the way it, it works. Um, but be really careful with energy right now because of this potential failed move right there. Um, looking at financials, um, you know, just really, really toppy looking. Um, this is was, you know, this 35 area is, is an area to watch. Uh, looking at industrials, again, just very choppy, below all of its moving averages. They're all moving lower. Looks pretty, pretty nasty right there. Um, nothing to see there. Uh, looking at technology, you know, just looking absolutely terrible. One, two, let's see if it could get back up to this, you know, you know, even to this area, 155-ish, 156 to make that third hump and then potential lower. Everyone's very bearish right now, including me. But with that being said, that's when the market kind of gives you that shock rebound because it's pushed to one, one direction and then you, you really rip lower. So just be real careful with that. That's XLK. I'm looking at XLV. XLV <laughs> looks better than most, right? Even though this day, um, you know, Thursday and Friday were absolutely terrible. You still have a rising 200 day and a rising 50 day and the 50 is above the 200, even though price just sliced through that 50. Um, I would still be careful because when the market comes for one, they're going to come for everything. If this is a last hurrah before the last real thrust down, which very well could be. Um, XLY, this is discretionaries. Um, again, you know, one, two, this could be the third piece, right? And then the, the, the move lower um, below all those moving averages and the 200 day is flat and it's gonna start to declining real, decline real soon. And so, um, yeah, that's not looking good at all. Communications dominated by Google and Netflix looks it's absolutely terrible, man. Oh my God, just riding the 50 day lower. Oh, absolutely brutal. Um, what else have we got here? XLU is utilities. <laughs> Looks fantastic compared to the others, but the last two days have been not so good. Um, may come back down and test the 50 day. Who knows? Um, again, this is utilities, but again, not, not a place I want to be. And this doesn't look so good. This looks like a, a capitulatory type move to the upside, you know, to the upside. Um, um, yeah. So that's XLU, um, XLP. 
um again staples looks real good but again it was so far extended so right now utilities and staples seem like they're holding up better than most but again when the market comes for one they may come for everything there may not be a safe place to hide um and so i'm getting into that camp now a little bit again this was a great move don't get me wrong you know for the month of march and into most of april but that's pretty ugly um xlb and this was this was brutal this hurt me you know because the miners oof um uh, so they got hit pretty hard. They're still above the 200 day, which is kind of flattish to rising ish. Um, 50 day is kind of right there, but it did fail right here again. Um, so it just can't break out. We'll see early next week what happens if it bounces up and can break through or not. But very, um, you know, not, not looking great, but holding up better than, than some. And then last one is real estate XLRE. And those are all the sectors in the SPX. Again, holding up better than most. But again, when they came on Thursday and Friday, they came for everything, right? You see these big, nasty bars on both days. So something to be aware of, okay? So that was all the different um, sectors in the S&P. I think it's good to go over each one and see what's holding up and what's not. Um, and just know that even if you're in one that is holding up better than most, things are still, again, looking really, really dicey. So the last part of this video is going to be what does a bottom look like, okay? And so this is my vision of what a bottom could look like. And doesn't that mean everything has to hit, but I think a lot of this does hit. So first thing, VIX. Let's talk about VIX. I think a VIX spiking to 40-ish, I think that's where we can start talking bottoms, okay? So a VIX in the, in the 40s, that's number one, right? Next thing. Put call ratio, equity only, PCCE, all right? Spiking above 1.4, really maybe even the 1.5 range. That would be, um, again, this was COVID lows right here. Um, that would be potential bottoming action. Again, do I think it's gonna get there like on Monday? I really don't. Um, I, I think that, um, that there's gonna be at least another fake out, but um, which will pull back into this range and then maybe that push lower but I could be wrong. Um, anyway, 1.5, 1.4 above put call ratio again. So that's sentiment, right? That's sentiment. So we have VIX, which is fear. We have sentiment. Um, uh, what else we have? And breath, MMFI, right? So this is a breath of the market. I think below 10% uh, or 10% or lower. I think that um, would be that washout, that extreme look. And I'm looking for extremes, right? So VIX above 40 is more of an extreme look. Put call ratio above 1.4, that's an extreme look. Breath washing out to under 10% above the 50-day moving average, that would be an extreme move. So again, I'm looking for everybody on one side of the boat. That's, that's the idea. Um, I'm looking for maybe SPX to start to pull in to the VWAP, right, from the COVID lows. That is, you know, this 38.33. If you think about it, again, I, and again, I think that there's a good chance that this makes one more spike up, like I showed you in here. It doesn't have to, but I think that it could. Um, you know, we're talking about 10% lower or so from where it is currently now. So again, 10% move, that's very possible. Um, when you look at this, you know, it was about 10.5% to this potential neckline right there. And it's not a perfect head and shoulders. I get it. But 10.5%, and we go like here, and look, it's about 10.5%. That would be the measured move to the, to the VWAP. So again, it, it kind of fits maybe too neatly. I don't know. But just to be aware of this 38, you know, 33-ish level um, when it finally gets here again. Um, is it extended for short here? I think it probably is. Probably needs to, again, if I can make one more hump, maybe even a lower high and then you have this head and shoulders right there, right? That'd be kind of crazy, but it could happen. Maybe it comes up and nicks, you know, 4,500 and then rolls over. That's where the short could, could happen. So um, check, uh, think about that. Uh, next up, cues. Again, I don't want to make this video too long. Um, the cues, this is a potential major area right there. And it is what nine and a half percent lower. Again, it's in that ten percent range, you know, ten-ish area. Um, it could undercut this 
right? It could undercut this too um, to get people really bearish and on one side of the boat. Um, so that's another thing, another thing to watch out for. Again, do I think it's going to go straight down from here? Nope. It could make, again, I just noticed this a head and shoulders type look over here, um, come back and maybe, you know, come to 360-ish or something, and then potential roll over. That would be, uh, that'd be nice and cute right there. Um, IWM, you know, this five wave pattern finishing, right? Uh, into the support, potential support. Again, in that 10-ish, 11-ish percent lower, that would be something, again, that's an area. Again, this is a huge area of support. We don't want to see this, this um, the break. It may even undercut it. And then a quick reversal back up, that could be, you know, with the VIX hitting 40, with put call ratio above 1.4, with washout 10, you know, less than 10% above the 50-day moving averages, that's something to look out for right now, you know, confluence of, of different things that says, hey, at least a short term, if not maybe longer term bottom could be in. And the last thing I'm looking for is IWO. I would like to see IWO bottom first, right? There's a small cap growth. Um, I would love to see this bottom first, you know, roughly seven, eight percent lower. Um, if this bottoms and rebounds first, and then the other, all the other things start to line up with it, that'd be the last piece. Um, you know, have have small cap growth lead us out of what's going on in the market. So, uh, so this that, that's it. That's my vision for what a bottom may look like. Um, you know, not saying it's going to happen. But that's what I'm watching. Um, I go over a lot of this, again, in my stocks to watch on Saturday, but I felt like it was so important right now because the market mm -hmm. looks terrible. I don't think this is the spot to, to short, personally. I'm not going to short right here. I'm waiting for one more spike up. You know, um, if, if we can get, you know, one, two, and maybe one more, even if it's, you know, 30, 30 uh, 360-ish, right? One more bump up then you're, you know, then that would be as it kind of rolls over, that would be the spot to potentially short, right? And then you get a bunch better short, you would have, um, you know, then if it breaks above, you know, 368-ish, you could be out. I tend to short via SQQQ. Um, again, even that looks extended um, to the upside, right? Let it kind of come back. Again, then you have the inverse head and shoulders as you would expect. Um, again, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, uh, but that's what I'm watching for. And listen, if I miss the short, then I miss the short. And again, as I'm stopping out into cash in, in the few positions I've left, that's just where I'm going to chill out until I start to see what I'm looking for. Okay. Um, that's what I got for you. Again, if you like this type of video, again, it's, not, it's my stocks to watch, but I couldn't um, give you guys any stocks to watch because I just didn't feel like there was anything in this type of market that was worth presenting to you guys. So this is how I want to do the video. Um, I hope you liked it. Um, appreciate you guys liking and subscribing uh, to my YouTube channel, uh, Trading View, and to um, and on on Twitter at Alpha Charts three six five. Like retweet this uh, type of video. I think that it, it's gonna you know it's worthwhile. I think people will get some value out of this. So uh, again, I appreciate y'all. Um, hope you all have a great week. Stay safe out there. Um, you know. Uh, you know, if you have to be in cash, if you're not even, if you're not worried, if you're worried about shorting or worried about, you know, you don't know what to do, just stay in cash for a little bit, save your money. Cause there'll be a better time in the market. Right. Anyway. And don't get caught up. If we do get a nice spike up, be careful. Don't think that this is all, oh, you know, support held higher, low, whatever. I still think this market is suspect. A lot needs to happen um, in this market for me to get bullish again. All right. Again, y'all have a great week. Take care. Bye.